Bonjour, bienvenue sur Christian Fight IQ. Aujourd'hui, ce soir, je vais recevoir Philippe Verlinden pour vous, ce grand champion belge qui a combattu dans toutes les grandes organisations, mais aussi face à tous les grands combattants, tantôt victorieux, tantôt perdants, mais rarement mis KO, toujours jusqu'à la, à la au dernier round et jusqu'aux décisions. Et c'est un grand plaisir pour, euh, pour moi de recevoir ce grand champion car il représente euh, la, la grandeur de la Belgique au niveau des arts martiaux, au niveau des kickboxing. Je m'en vais, vais tout de suite le rejoindre pour faire un live avec lui. Hello, hello, champion. Hey. How are you? Good man, good. Hey, yo. uh, I'm very good. Thank you for accepting the meeting. It's a great pleasure for me. It's a great honor. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Always a pleasure. Happy New Year. Yes, you too, you too. You just came from your, your training now. Yeah, yeah, I did some training. Where do you train? Bull or do you go to Breda? Yeah, yeah I still go to Breda sometimes and then I, I, I train in my own gym, Bull Gym. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the evening training I do for myself at my own gym. But I was just looking at your Wikipedia page. I don't know if it's true or not, but tell me, is it true that your last fight was in 2018? Uh, yeah, my last fight was in 2018, I think, against uh, Bukemea. Yes, yes, yeah. Why, yes, why so yeah. long? Why two years off? Yeah, there was a year I didn't have no no good offers. One year no offers and then the second year now it's Corona, so no fights at all. Huh? Uh, so you, 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 are not, you don't have any contract with any organization at the moment? No, no, no. No, nothing anymore. I had a, my last contract was with Infusion and they cancelled the league. So that was everything then. But is that big organization at the moment, they're welcoming everybody, one championship? No, no at the moment, uh, not, no. You haven't received any offer from one championship? Uh, no, not yet, no, no. <laughs> But if they offer I've been you... there, we've been there to fight with Marat. Yeah, if they offer. Have you been there? You fought nice offer. Them. I was wondering because, yeah. you know, since I started this page I'm doing on Instagram, I'm just trying to think out loud uh, with Belgium fighters and what's happening with Belgium, what Belgium is not pushing much for the fighters. You've been there in the business, your father was in the, in the, the business as well. So can you tell me what you think? About the Belgium fighters? The Belgium fighters, Belgium organization, what Belgium is not pushing, reaching like a Dutch. Sm small country as well, but they might make to, to, to make it big. Yeah, but we cannot forget we have the best uh, Belgian fighters at the world now. They're from Belgium. Eh? If you take Marat, he's from Belgium. He trained in Belgium, he fought in Belgium. He was in our national team. If you take uh, Jamal Ben Tadek, he's from uh, from Belgium, uh, Harut, he was the champion, he's from Belgium, so we and we, we have a lot of other good fighters. Jamal is also from Belgium, huh? so they're all uh, good Belgian fighters. Huh? They, they crossed the border in Antwerp and they came to, to train in Breda. And uh, now we have a steady crew there to, to fight all over the world. Huh? So we have very good fighters from Belgium, but nobody knows it because it's, uh, they have a, a, a Dutch management, you know? Quite often they all go to Dutch management. Okay, I, you just opened my eyes there. I didn't know that. But so yeah. if you have to say that you say that we have good clubs in Belgium. Yeah, the, yeah, we have good clubs in Belgium also. But uh, it's just uh, the it's also about connections and management. And the big management teams are in in Holland. And yeah. then it's more easy to cross the border and go train there because you have the connections there. But. Uh, Eventually, the, 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 the good fighters, they will always come at the big organizations when they, uh, when they train good, they will come up, you know, they will float up, they will, they will eventually come up. And, uh... and you and yourself, have you tried to organize a competition or anything or you're too busy focusing on fighting? Now, now I'm, I'm at a later stage of my career now, so now it's uh, maybe if it, there's a nice fight, it's a nice offer and I, I can put my heart in it, I will for sure do it. And then I'm slowly uh, moving over to coaching fighters, so I, uh, like we have a few good fighters ourselves, like Nafi Belalovski and Cedric de Kersmark, they're always all, also champions. 
in in lower divisions they also had a contract for glory but then yeah the corona came and they couldn't fight anymore and now everybody's waiting for fights and to break through yes. but i think in this and the next 10 years i will also be a part of uh, building belgian fighters and building uh, them to uh, to top promotions i think yeah Zeer goed, zeer goed. Zeer uh, <laughs> goed, dat is de goal, hè? Yes, that's what we want, the own fighter from the yeah. country. But yeah, I want to ask you a question. You fought a lot of tournament and non-tournament. Which one do yeah. you prefer? Well, the tournaments were fun for me also, yeah. I think the tournaments, uh, yeah, because... Uh, you push yourself harder and you can do more than one fight in a night. I had I had two or three tournaments where I did two or three fights in a night. Yes, and, uh, I know. Yeah, it's a it's, uh, it's 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 a cool thing to do, and uh, especially if you if you fight the best in the world in your tournament, and sometimes you fight two. I have one night I fought uh, Melvin Manu. <laughs> And, and uh, Artem Levin, the best in the world. Yes, so, yes, so, yes. Yeah, it's a tournament of fun. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting. You need a little bit of luck, and it's, it's more. Uh, and you build, you build a little bit history for the fights for the viewers. It's also fun. They see the first fight, second fight. They know the fighters. I think it's a good concept tournament. I like it. But how do you approach that? Do you prepare for one and the other because you don't know who you're gonna have in second? Position? No, you have to prepare mentally. You have to prepare prepare for your first fight for your for the first one and uh, and that's where everything goes in but uh, physically and your condition you're gonna prepare to be ready for all the for, for all the night for the fight so you're gonna you're gonna train also like that like you do three fights in a night and uh, three times four rounds and like that Oof, it's not easy <laughs> and avoid no, no, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why when you become champion in a tournament you can really say you're the best, huh? So yeah, oh yes, oh yes. Well, uh, I saw that you fought a lot of fighters, big names, Menhuf, Artem, Israel, Adesanya, yeah. and everything. Which one will give you the hardest fight? Uh, I think the the the, the hardest fight was uh, technically wise was Artem Levin. He's a very weird, uh, weird yeah, opponent. Yeah, playing around and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's, he's weird. His distance is different a little bit, so you have to get used to it. So I came from an, a, a whole different fight with Melvin, and then I have to fight Artem, and that, that were different styles, so that was a little bit difficult. And then when I, I remember when I was younger, uh, I fought Rico Verhoeven, but that was because uh, the the weight that was the problem. The, the condition became too heavy. He was 117 and I was like 90 kilos or something at that time. So then you have the weight issues with the heavyweights. I also had that a little bit uh, against Bonjanski. You're not strong enough to fight those guys. I actually always fought above my weight class. So, but the you last changed year a lot of, my of career, weight as well throughout your career. Yeah, yeah. Heavyweight, yeah. light, light heavyweight, middleweight. Why? Is it because you're taking on weight or for opportunities? Yeah, the begin, the beginning of my career, there was only K1, and everybody was watching in K1. So you had to choose 70 kilo, or you have to become a heavyweight. And I was more like a heavy guy, a big guy. I was a little bit chubbier when I was young, so I always thought I fought heavyweight. So I always was looking to to, to become heavy and fight heavy fighters. But then, with the, when the sport evolved and glory evolved, there came more weight classes, and I learned about weight cutting, and that's why I changed weight class. And now I think if now I even can make 77, I think if I do a good weight cut, a healthy 77, one, you really? Uh, yeah. With, yeah, I think oh, I what, you are one. One meter, one meter 90. 90. 
90 yeah, and you do 77. I think I can do 77. I never wow. tried, but I was 77 one time when I was sick a, a few months ago. So uh, I think in a healthy condition, I can I can make 77. But which one is your so preferred was, weight, your natural weight, the one you can keep? My natural speed? weight is now, yeah, now now it's about about 85. It's my natural weight now, 84, 85. So I, middle, I was less than weight. when I fought. That's middle weight, yeah. And that's why you can help use your strength, stamina, and power, yeah? Speed yeah, as well. Yeah, better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, Speed okay. Well. Yeah, yeah that's, not, that's not easy. Oh, because drastically, uh, I mean, changing weight like that and keeping going 77, that's Cedric Dumbe weight. Wow, that's very low for you. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. So, uh, I'm not taking too much of your time. I just want to ask you, so do you know when's your next fight at the moment? No, 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 no. I don't have any offers. I'm not really training for a fight, only to to keep myself in condition. And oh, we will see. Yeah? With Corona, everything changed a little bit. Eh? So now everybody's waiting for fights, of course, now. But we will see what it, which organizations are going to come up and which where there are going to be a lot of fights, because now it's only a few fights. Eh? A few so. of them, yeah, true. I saw that Glory has changed the management. I think uh, all the Emmas and everything, they're no longer there. So no 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 they 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 yeah, they changed a, a new concept I think I don't know what they're doing also the... yeah I just I was just yesterday talking to one of um, the fight and uh, glory uh, Nordin Mahedin is number ah, yeah, five yeah I yeah I know him in in bread sometime yeah yes he told me that yeah yeah with uh, Khalid um, yeah so he, uh, he was telling me that everything changed at the moment but it's okay. I, I was wondering what's uh, now your your relationship with Emma's. Are you still very close? Yes, 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 for sure. Yeah. Because now I'm I'm helping Jamal to prepare a little bit for his fight with Rico Verhoeven. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very good with Nick. We're a family team, so we always do everything together. And uh, so, like yeah. Maura, those guys, I help them. If if I go, that it's it's a long drive for me sometimes, but. If they're in a fight, I help them prepare and we do everything together and we are, we still, uh, yeah, we still close with Well, you other. drive up to Breda? Yeah, I drive up to Breda then, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you for accepting the interview. I have just two more questions and then I'll leave you alone. So, what's your okay. music entrance when you walk in? Which one do you like? Which one can you choose? I know sometimes you cannot choose, but when you can choose, which one do you pick all the time? Uh, my song was always uh, "Let Me Clear My Throat" from uh, I don't know his name anymore. "Let Me Clear My Throat" from DJ Cool or something. It's when you're entering, yeah, 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 it's true. And um, and I had a, I think I had an entrance of Metallica before it, something uh, from Unforgiven, the okay. the, the, the intro from Unforgiven. And then that one, yeah, <laughs> that was always those. my entrance music. Yeah, I combined them first uh, the the guitar solo of of uh, of Metallic uh, of Metallic, I think, yeah, and then uh, DJ Cool. Yeah. yeah, good, good. And last question, and the question nothing to do with sport, but there's always a, a trainer's uh, basket shoes, sneakers that people like, and that's the one yeah. always they buy, even when they yeah. they finish, they go and buy a new one. So which one is you for you? Well, I have a lot of sneakers, but I'm, I'm I was always a Nike a Nike fan, so I always the Nike Air Maxes. Air Max. I always have a Nike Air Max model, but not like the classics, but the the special ones or the latest news. I always have a pair of those, always. Yeah. You grew up in Antwerp. I will always choose a Nike Air Max. I think. You grew up in Antwerp. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Antwerp and they love Air Max, so yes, I know. They love the Air Max, uh, yeah. <laughs> nowadays, I sometimes have the new Balance and the Adidas, they're also good, but the, the Nike Air Max always does something special with me, yeah. <laughs> Still from when I was young. <laughs> Champion, thank you so much. I won't take more yeah, of your time. No problem, thank you for man. giving me that interview. No it's an honor. It's a pleasure. No and problem. Good, best for you, good chance for your, your next fight. Okay, thank you very much.